Hey everyone, welcome back to Hope for Today. My name is Lynn Wilson. I'm glad you're joining me today. So what will you find here at Hope for Today? I know we've had a lot of new people checking in on the podcast. Today we're going to talk about, uh, we're going on a journey. We're going to go back to Egypt. We're going to get out of Egypt. We're going to see where God's taking us. But this is a safe place for you to learn the Word of God. This is a safe place for you to be able to study the Word of God. This is a place where you can find hope for today, find hope for tomorrow. And know that this is a place where God can speak to your heart in a very gentle way. I am not here to judge you. I have no right to judge you. I don't know you. And even if I thought I know you, I don't. Only the Lord knows you and the Lord knows your heart and he knows what you're reaching out for. So I'm going to tell you something. If you're listening to this podcast, then the Lord has something he wants you to hear. I have found that over and over, you know, maybe it's a chance time you've turned on this channel and all of a sudden you're like, wait, wait, I needed to hear that. You know what? If you're listening, just kind of open your ears and open your eyes to see what God wants to talk to you about. So we've been talking about Abram and he's been traveling and he's taken some detours on his journey. You know, the Lord spoke to Abram twice and told him some things and Abram started off on the right journey, the right path, if you want to say, made some detours. One of the detours we talked about last week, he went into Egypt. And we're going to be in Genesis 12, 11 through 20 again. And let me just read some of that passage to kind of get us back into the swing of things. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarah, I know you are a beautiful woman in appearance. And when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me. And they won't let me live, but they'll let you live. This is in the English Standard Version. Say that you're my sister, and it may go well with me, because you, because you being my sister. Um, then Abram entered Egypt, and the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. And when the princesses, princesses, excuse me, princes of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. This would be Abram's wife is that woman. And for her sake, he dwelt well with Abram. And he had sheep and oxen and male donkeys and male servants and female servants and female donkeys and camels. Wow. So what happened is he went where he shouldn't have gone. Okay, I'm going to make a couple of points here, and then we're going to bring that back again. So Abram really disobeyed God, didn't trust God. There was a famine. He freaked out, and he basically went somewhere else to go find food and shelter, but he went to a place he should not have been. He was really out of the will of God. But he went there and then said, you know what? I need to manipulate. I need to kind of maneuver the waters a little bit to make this work for me because I don't want to be killed. And so he lied. He, you know, was deceitful and deceptive and all the rest. And so he lived and his wife lived and they lived very well. She lived in the par in the palace and he probably had a really nice home. And he's got, obviously he's got servants and he's got donkeys. He's probably got money. He's eating good. Who wouldn't want to live like that? Okay. It says, but the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with a great plagues because of Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me she was your wife? Why did you not say, why did you say she's my sister? So I took her as my wife. Like, dude, what's happening here? What are you doing to me? He said, from here on out, take your wife and go take her. And Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him that they should be sent, they should send him far away and his wife and all that he had. So Abram left with his wife and he left with some money and riches and whatever else he gathered while he was there and servants and animals and all the rest. And off he goes again. Wow. Mm, I'll tell you, I want to take a minute. I want to take a minute to do something a little different. I want you to repeat after me. Now there's nobody in the room with you, I'm sure. Uh, you're by yourself, so nobody's going to hear you. I want you to repeat this. It's part of a song. Many of you sung this when you were little. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
for the Bible tells me so. Now, if you need to repeat that a few times and maybe even close your eyes and just sort of meditate on that, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Oof. You know, a simplistic song, I ta I've been talking the last couple of weeks about simplifying life. And a simplistic song that has so much depth and meaning for us. And we joke, oh, that's a little children's song. It's not a children's song. We sing it to children because it's simplistic, but the message of the gospel is simplistic. Jesus died on the cross for God so loved the world that all who believed should not perish but have everlasting life. It's simplistic. It's so simple that people don't think it's enough. They feel they have to earn their way to heaven. They have to do extra things to, you know, I don't know, pay penance and things like that. Abram was on a journey. God told him where to go. God told him what to do. And he started and he built an altar. And, you know, God spoke to him. And then there was famine. And again, he freaked out. He leaves. He goes to a place he shouldn't be. He lies. He does things he shouldn't do. All the rest. You, we've been over the story. What happens in the end is God sends a plague and it pushes Abram out of where he is. Now, the Lord could have just taken his life. You know, the Lord could have just said, you've disobeyed me and you're out of my will and just taken his life. But he spared his life. But he had already told Abram and made some promises to Abram when he had spoken to him. So that really wasn't part of the picture. So God did spare his life and then nudged him out of there and said, it's time to go. You need to get your things and you need to get back to where I've told you to be. Last week, we talked about what journey are you on? Last week, we talked about are you in your Canaan? Do you know where your Canaan is? Do you know where you need to be? Last week, we talked about do you know what your purpose is? These are just some of the questions that I brought up through the message. You know, a few months ago, I think it was in October. It must have been in October. I talked about how I had hit a wall, and I had a, I had yelled, hands up. Lord, that's it. I'm done. It's over. I can't deal with this. I'm done. And it was at that time is when God could speak to me. And I know God spoke to me and God gave me a clear message without a shadow of a doubt. And I did what he told me to do. He gave me three things I do on a daily basis. And I've reminded you this throughout the last few podcasts. And I wrote down a bunch of things that were bothering me that were, you know, heavy burdened on my heart. I didn't know how I was going to get through and all the rest. And I put them on my phone and I put them in my notes on my phone and I locked it. And I was going to commit this to the Lord for 30 days and pray over it. And then in 30 days around Thanksgiving, I was going to open that up and see what God's been doing. I basically had to write it down and I had to forget it. I had to just kind of leave it there. Leave it at the altar, if you want to say. And God spoke to me. And I know what he said, and I did what he told me to do. Well, Thanksgiving came, Christmas came. I just couldn't bear the thought of opening that list. It just, it was just bothering me. I couldn't do it. Well, I'll tell you what. A few weeks ago, I went on vacation. And my husband and I went, and we didn't have any other family with us, no kids with us. It was just us alone. It was a very quiet setting. We went to see some friends. We had went to a wedding. Uh, we did some traveling around. You know all the fun things that you can do. But the biggest thing I came away with when we were at the hotel, we never turned the TV on. I was able to, you know, spend some time with the Lord. I was able to be still and know that I am God. I had that moment. God gave me some time to actually be able to be still, some time to, to know that He is God. And I felt comfortable opening up my phone, and I did. Now, I wrote 15, I didn't even remember what I wrote, but I wrote 15 things down in my phone that I prayed about. And I went and deleted 11 of those 15. He had answered 11 of my requests. And some of those things were kind of like, it just didn't exist anymore, maybe. There were other things that were very uh, tangible that I could say, yes, I see this. 
And the four that were left on the list were only, they were things that were going to be like ongoing that you don't necessarily get an answer about it today. It's something in the future, but I can see God working in that area. It was quite interesting. We had then gone to uh, an event and I had met someone there. I knew of her, didn't know her well, and I wanted to get to know her and we were talking. She was sharing something with me that God was doing in her life. And as she's telling me this, I'm, th- I, I, I'm sitting there with goosebumps going, that message is for me from the Lord. And I said to my husband, it was as if the Lord came down in her flesh and, you know, the Lord couldn't audibly speak to me, but he spoke to me through her. Something she was going through in her own life was identical to something I had just been praying about. Wow. I'll tell you, it was like, you know, upside the head. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. Well, the next day we went to another event and she was there and she started telling me about something else the Lord is doing in her life and something the Lord is challenging her. And I'm sitting there going, that's what I need to hear. So two times this one woman, sort of a random meeting, two times, she had no idea what she was telling me that the Lord is doing in her life was what the Lord wanted me to hear. And it was just another confirmation from the Lord. I am here. If you can be still and know that I am God, I am on the throne, I am here for you, I haven't forgotten about you, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know, it was amazing because I was able to sort of understand a little bit more of my journey, understand a little bit more of where my Canaan is, and understand a little bit more of what my purpose is. They were the questions that I brought to you last week, and God was answering these for me. You know, I had to go on vacation and get away from the hustle and bustle of life in order for the Lord to speak to my heart and give me some clear direction. And I actually sat down, the same thing, got my notes out on my phone, and I write all I wrote all this out. I didn't want to forget that moment. How many of us have had a wonderful moment and you're like, oh, I want to remember this forever. And then a week goes by, 10 days go by, three weeks go by and and somebody says something and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I think that happened. I forget. I didn't want to forget. So I wrote it down and I locked it. And I said to my husband, we're going away in another about two months. And I said, that week is when I'm going to open it up and I want to see what God's doing. These weren't so much of prayer request of, Lord, I need help. Um, I need you to help me through something. It was more, Lord, you've spoken to me. I want to kind of advance in that. And I want to see in two months what the Lord's been doing in my life, the journey he's continuing to take me on, the Canaan that he has for me, the purpose in my life. You know, one of the things I find, I don't know about you all, but you know, seasons of life, I'm in a different season. My kids are grown now. They don't need mommy. They need mom once in a while, maybe. My season in life at work has changed. We're having different um, repositioning of people, I guess you'd say. And people are taking on different tasks. And I've been given some new tasks. So not, not that any of this is bad, but it's a new season. You know, my dad's gone, so I'm not a daughter to two parents. I'm a daughter to one parent taking care of one parent and helping them through life and just many other things that, you know, I, things I used to be needed for, I'm no longer needed for. So it makes you feel like you've got a lack or a, you know, your sense of purpose is gone. You're lacking something. And these are some of the things that I could see God working through in my life. So I have some questions for you. Have you lost your way? Have you gone to your Egypt? Have you made mistakes and you're ashamed to return to your Canaan? How many of you have started out on a journey? God's told you, you've had your altar, you've heard God, you've, you know, you've committed things to the Lord, you've heard him speak. Now you're on your journey and you've taken one detour after another and maybe somewhere ended up in Egypt, the Egypt you did not belong in. Did you lie your way through things? Did you cheat? Did you maneuver the system? to get what you wanted while you were there. 
were you on the journey and you freaked out like he did because there was a famine, maybe something, there was an obstacle and you just didn't know how to handle it. And instead of committing it to the Lord, you ran and you ran into the wrong place, the wrong people, the wrong situation, lied your way through it. And you can feel the Lord's tug. You know, he brought a plague on Pharaoh. Maybe he's just, you know, as they say, souring the milk and you realize it's time to go. It's time to go back to my altar so to speak, my altar where God spoke to me and get right. Do you need to return back to that altar? Do you need to go back to the place where God spoke to you? Sometimes it literally is a physical place. It might be a place in your house where you remember this is where I sat and I prayed and God spoke to me. Sometimes I actually want to sit there again. So I have that connection. Do you have something you need to make right? Is there something in your life that is just causing a rift between you and the Lord? Do you need to begin a new journey? You know, I've talked to so many of you in person and via email, and I would say the average age of my podcast is 60 and above. A few maybe in the 50s, some 40s and younger, but the majority is 60 and above. And we've talked about soaring at 60. I don't want to hear about your aches and pains. I don't want to hear what you can't do. I don't want to hear any of that negative. What I want to hear is what you can do. God has given you breath to breathe. God has a purpose for your life today. There is hope for today for another person because of you, your witness and your purpose and what God wants you to share with them. Abram was about 75 years old when he was leaving Egypt. So don't give me, you can't. Yes, you can. At any age, you're on a journey, serving the Lord, doing what's right. I don't want to hear how old you are, and I don't want to hear what you can't do because of. You just, just get your walker, you get your cane, you get your mobile scooter, you get whatever you need to get on, you get your running shoes, your tennis shoes, your sandals. If you're going to Egypt, you grab that water bottle and you set out on that journey and you tell the Lord, I'm going with you. You take my hand, you guide, you direct, you show me, you allow me to be a witness for you. You allow me to encourage a heart. Some of you are sitting at home and somebody has written you a note, an email, a text, or a phone call, had maybe brought you a meal, and constantly you're being encouraged. When is the last time you did that for someone else? When's the last time you said thank you? Get back on that journey and get back to that altar and ask the Lord, what is it again? Maybe you've lost sight of what he wants you to do. He has no problem reminding you if you ask. Lord, what is it? What's my purpose? What's my journey? What's my Canaan? I need to get out of Egypt. I need to get out fast, quick, and in a hurry. What is it you want me to be doing? All right, that's it for today. We'll catch you all next week, the same time, the same place on Hope for Today.